اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین بار الخلاء اجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین والحمد للہ الذی لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالسخور ميدانا أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقل ربي يدخلني مدخل صدق وأخرجني مخرج صدق وَجَعَلْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانًا نَصِيرًا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ اللهم صل على وآل محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah the most kind, the most merciful It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, we then begin this sermon the way the Commander of the Faithful used to begin many of His, by advising us, Usikum ibadallah bi taqwallah, that I advise you, servants of God, to be God conscious, God fearing, and pious human beings. We are discussing the concept of theology or the concept of Tawheed in particular. And so far we have discussed two proofs for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first being the proof of a necessary existence which equals the intellectual proof. And then we looked at the proof of organization last week. And that every time we see organization it proves that there has to be an organizer. And this is the proof of the body or the proof of the senses. Today we come to the third proof. Uh, which will take us a few weeks insha'Allah and this is the internal proof or what's known as the proof of the heart. If you recall when we first started, we said for us to formalize our belief in Allah Azza wa Jal and strengthen it, it requires three components. It requires the component of the intellect, it requires the component of the senses and it also requires the component of the heart. It's the heart and the proof of the heart that if we can sink it and if we can actualize it, what happens is that our Iman then thrives at that particular point and all of these doubts that sometimes creep into our minds escape from us because our heart has accepted the concept of God. This proof of the heart is known as the proof of fitra, the proof of innate nature. You know it's interesting that I believe at one time the proof of fitra was quite strong, you know. Um, I remember I can see my grandmother, may Allah bless her insha'Allah, that when she would sit on her musalla and she would pray all day, you know, if I were to ask her, like prove to me the existence of God, you know, she would laugh at me. She knew it in her heart that God existed, right? She didn't, may not have understood the intellectual proof, she may not have understood these different proofs, but she could feel the existence and the presence of God. 
But as we've moved on in time and as we've been further immersed in materialism and further proofs of different kinds, the fitra proof has escaped us. And so we require these other proofs to once again solidify our concept. But we really need to go back to this concept of fitra and this innate nature that exists within us. Now to understand the proof of fitra, it's not nearly as complicated as the, the first proof that we discussed, but it requires an introduction and a development into it. Scholars state that regardless of a person's race, gender, background, knowledge, whatever it is that a person is or wherever they are, uh, when difficulties arise in that person's life, they inherently within themselves look out for someone or call someone who they feel can assist them. And they realize in many instances that the one that can assist them is not another human being like them. They reach out to some form of higher power. I think this is something that even we as believers can testify to. That if it were not for the five daily prayers that God has ordained or obligated upon us, we may go the entire day without remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's only when difficulties arise that we connect back to God. And so similarly, when a person is going through a form of a hardship or difficulty, inherently they are hopeful that someone will assist them. Yeah? This is something that exists within every single human being regardless of who they are. Allah Azza wa Jal says this in Surah 29 verse 65, فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ He says when they board the ship, they invoke Allah putting exclusive faith in Him. فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ But when they come back to land, behold, they ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You know, if you're on a plane, and today Allah talks about the ship, you know, but if you're on a plane and all of a sudden turbulence hits, what does everybody naturally say? Oh God, yeah? Right? This is a natural thing, whether they believe in God or not. At that moment, they will call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we land, we go back to our way of life, forgetting the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gives a perfect example in the Holy Quran of Fir'aun. Yeah, that when Fir'aun, in all of his, his, his arrogance and all of his pride, to that extent where he says, Anna rabbukumul. A'la, I am your most Lord, the High, the most Lord. SubhanAllah, this, this level of arrogance was rare, you know. <laughs> Today we see a lot of nations have a lot of arrogance, but they don't proclaim to be the Ilah or the Rabb. But this is where Fir'aun had reached. But when Fir'aun was drowning, what does Fir'aun say? Amantu, I believe now. Yeah, Annahu la ilaha illa alladhi amanat bihi banu Israel wa ana min al-Muslimin. I believe in that Lord. I submit to that Lord. Why? Because he found himself in a state of desperation. And this is something that we should learn. That we will eventually find ourselves in a sense of desperation. But there will come a time when the jawab will come back the same way Allah gave a response to Fir'aun. What does he say? Al-an? Now? Now you want to believe? Yeah? It's too late for your belief at this point. And so this is a point that we, Allah emphasizes in the Qur'an. That innately... We have this force. Now, whether some people may call this force Allah, some people may call this force something else, whatever it is, but there is something that innately exists within us. A person that, a question that should be asked and the scholars ask too when they develop the concept of fitra is that is this inner voice that we have or is this longing for this higher power that we have really something that is innate within us? Or is it something that really is the byproduct of our environment? So from the time we are children, for example, our parents have taught us about God. Yeah? We see churches and we see mosques and we see temples everywhere. Our schools, there's a discussion of God. When you look at social media, there's discussions of God all the time from presenters. And so is this something really that is innate? Or is this just a byproduct of our environment that we live in and hence we all have this internal belief on something that we may not necessarily innately possess? And the answer to this question is very beautifully given by our scholars. They say that customs change over time. Yeah? That without a doubt, you, whatever custom existed in a society, over time these customs will change. You look at our own homes, for example. We'll give this example again in a few weeks. 
but in our own homes culturally we may have eaten our cultural food yeah we may have liked for example nihari and biryani or whatever but today our kids like pasta and burgers yeah customs will change over a period of time but when we see something that exists amongst all nations yeah but when we see something that has existed at all times during all ages without exception that in itself is an indication that what that nature is is something that is innately given to us when we are born so for example the concepts such as shelter food clothing love this is something every single human being regardless of where they are desire for and need they need shelter they need food they need love now the way these things may be fulfilled changes over time yeah people may for example had one time lived in tents then they lived in different types of mud homes and now we have homes like we do today these change but the idea of shelter doesn't change and so the need remains the same and therefore this 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 truth that exists within each and every one of us of desiring for a higher power that exists within all human beings is something that as well has not changed we may call it different things today but the need for it is something that exists within all human beings this innate need for a higher power for someone to be there for us when we are going through difficulty this innate nature is called the fitra yeah it is called something that exists within each and every single human being allah azza wa jal says in the holy quran in surah 30 verse number 30 fa aqim wajhaka lid-din hanifa so be steadfast in the uprightness or in the religion that is upright fitrat allah allati fatara an-nas 'alayha the natural way of allah which he has instilled in all people yeah this natural way that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about is a state of existence or a state of nature that exists within each human being that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fashioned us with it is something which is present in every essence of every person we will define what this is in time right now just as we talked about the first proof when we had to develop the concept of god similarly with this we exist we accept the fact that there exists a natural nature within every single human being every single human being innately desires that we haven't called this nature god yet yeah but we are reached a point where we have accepted the fact or we should accept the fact that all of us have these certain innate natures that exist within us these innate natures are within each and every single human being in a state of potentiality yeah they have not been actualized yet meaning that this is a pre-programmed the way allah has created us you know you take the example of our phones or our laptops there are certain programs that are already in there now how do we use them will ensure how we maximize them similarly within the creation of every human being there are pre-programmed things god has given us how we utilize them will either help us find god or it will help us turn away from god but it's up to our nature then how we use it that will result in this finality inshallah as we continue and if god gives us life we will then get to the point of proving this that allah azza wa jal can be found through that innate nature wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin bismillahir rahmanir rahim قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد صدق الله العلي العظيم الله صل على أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين 
اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سبتي الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي صل على محمد وآل محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد we start this second sermon the way we always do by remembering our brothers and sisters throughout the world who are going through extreme hardships. We remember our brothers and sisters in particular in Lebanon, in Palestine, in Yemen and all of those surrounding areas where people are being displaced, innocent people are being killed and lives are taken due to the aggressive and occupying intentions of another country. Um, you know, there's many the levels of, you know, when we look at grief, uh, we always try to figure out how to talk about this in a different manner because it's the same unfortunate story that hasn't come to an end yet. Um, and it's also hard to imagine how this comes to an end without, without certain ideologies being removed from the picture, like the ideology of Zionism as a whole, yeah? This idea of territorial supremacy, uh, it's hard to imagine in this day and age where everything is visible for us that we can ever go back to a way that it was before. And it's really going to be interesting to see how this unfolds and how this concludes. But we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that it, includes, that it concludes very quickly, inshallah. You know, when tragedy strikes, it affects all. Naturally, we can assume and understand how it affects our brothers and sisters, we can imagine. We don't know how it feels to have bombs dropped on us. We don't know how it feels to be removed from our homes. We don't know how it feels to have entire families wiped out. Wiped out, yeah. Um, I saw some numbers where I think it was a few dozen families that have lost every single person. That means they don't exist anymore in any way in this world. SubhanAllah. You know, we live in a day and age where you would think this would not ha happen. And so we can understand the grief and the suffering of our brothers and sisters who are enduring it. And we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that He continues to infuse within them and in them the faith necessary to be successful. Because at the end of the day, that's all they have, honestly, right? Is that the realization that what is with God is better. And that God, nothing goes unseen. But I also want to relate this back to us, that even though we are far away and we are seeing these things happening, grief affects us as well. This tragedy has affected us. And in, in the conversations that I've had and in the counselings that we've engaged in, many of us are suffering through some form of, of grief as well. And grief and anxiety and frustration and even tapping into a form of depression when we are constantly viewing these images on our phones and constantly looking at news articles and watching um, the news. And so the idea that is, is the, the concept that's really important for us is that while we are not supposed to be detached from what is going on, we have to know what's happening, we have to feel the pain of what is happening. Because once we stop feeling the pain of what is happening, unfortunately I think, you know, it will 
it will lead us to consider this to be another story and we don't want that to happen. We've seen it happen in the past and we don't want this to be forgotten ever by anyone. But at the same time, it's really important that we focus on our mental health as well. You know, we've talked about mental health a lot, but this is something right now is a key example of us focusing on this particular subject. And in particular, when it comes to those who are older, like us, you know, um, you know, the World Health Organization says that globally, 5% of adults suffer from depression. And the cause of this depression could be so many different factors. But this number significantly increases when it comes to those who are 60 plus. When it comes to the age of 60 plus, the World Health Organization says that nearly 20% of adults suffer from some type of mental health, such as anxiety and depression. This is unfortunately a reality that we live in and the, and, and the events of today are compounding this, right? Um, there is a natural feeling of frustration when our bodies don't function the same way that they did in the past. There is a natural level of frustration when our kids grow up and sometimes forget about us um, in that process. And so there's a frustration that is natural already, but then now we have a compounded act that adds on to this frustration and so I want us to not lose focus of our mental health and I just want to talk about five key things really that we can do to ensure that we stay strong because if we stay strong we can be a louder voice for those who are suffering yeah I don't want this to be detached from the overall conversation of, of standing up and being supportive of our brothers and sisters the first thing that is important for us as we get older to make sure that our mental health stays strong is that we have to be physically active yeah um, you know like the, the the reports state that 15 minutes of physical activity per day can reduce the dis the risk of depression by 26 percent manala a quarter of the risk can be removed if we are just 15 minutes a day physically active. Whether this is going for a walk right now, the weather is still good for us to go out for a short walk. Um, whether it's at home we are doing yoga or a treadmill or whatever it is. But we cannot lose sight of the importance of just some physical activity. We get very comfortable just going from the car to the sofa. Yeah? But we have to stay active so that we can be fresh and our minds also stay fresh. The second responsibility that we also have is to foster social connections. This is, is really interesting where it says building and maintaining close relationships, especially or even in older age, has been shown to improve mental health and lower the risk of dementia by 33%. Yeah? One third improvement if we just have healthy relationships with other people. This is something, subhanAllah, that our mosque so beautifully allows us to do. Yeah? Where we come together, where we meet others, there's no need to rush away quickly. I know many people have to go to work, but the rest of us, like myself, live a retired life. You know? um, sit out, hang out, talk to each other. Yeah? The weather is nice, talk to each other. Right? There's no need to rush back to our homes. Foster this relationship because this just general conversation with each other can enlighten the mind. It yeah? can relieve the stresses of the mind. And this is again something that I'm telling, that I keep saying that like we say the mosque is, is uh, this is a, not we say, some say that the mosque is a checklist and a ritual. Well, just come. Yeah, just come. There is so much benefit. Thursday night programs, come. Juma, come. There are senior activities, come. Just, just come to mosque. Yeah? Even if you don't want to engage in the religious discussion, you can fall asleep in my lectures. I won't mind at all. Yeah? But your presence here has value. Yeah? Your presence here is good for your mental health. And so make an effort to come. And for those who are not able to come uh, because they can't drive or don't have a ride, Man, reach out. Honest to God, reach out. Yeah, we, there is enough resources available in our center for people to be willing to drive and pick up somebody. And so let's take that step. Sometimes we are hesitant to make the first call. If you know someone like that who's hesitant, then you make the call to them. Right? But we have to foster this, this relationships with each other. And this is the entire purpose of Juma, if you think about it. 
right? The fact that another Juma is not allowed to be held right next door. While in normal programs or normal Salah, you can have multiple Masajid very close to each other. But Juma, you bring everyone to a Masjid or Jami'ah. Why? So that people come together. Yeah? There is benefit to this. Like what God has done, like as I get older and as I understand in a, in, in a more deeper manner, I would like to think about what God does. Like every single thing God has ordained has benefit to our dunya and akhirah. It's not just akhirah. Yeah? Everything. Yeah? We may not understand some of these benefits, but there's absolute benefit. And so number two, foster these relationships. Number three, maintain a routine. Right? A lot of times our kids, when in the summer break, they don't have a routine. And so you find them lazing around, and then when it's time to go back to school, they have anxiety attacks. Right? Why? Because they didn't have a routine. Have a routine. And the older we get, we need a routine. We had a routine for 40 years while we worked. Now all of a sudden we don't have a routine. Have a routine. Have something that you do, even if it's small. But do it daily. Do it something that you repeat. Of course, engaging in cognitive activities. You know, it is said in a study, seniors who engage in mentally stimulating activities reduce the risk of Alzheimer's by 47%. 47% just by being mentally active. Figure something out, right? Figure some ways of just enhancing your brain and engaging your brain the way you used to when you were younger. And so do this because it's important for your mental health. And the last thing they say is spiritual exercises, spiritual practices. Spiritual practices lowers the level of depression and anxiety. We, my brothers and sisters, are people of Iman. Yeah? We are people of faith. But the problem that we get into, honest to God, is that we reach a certain age where we fall back on our previous Iman. That's not going to work. Yeah? You have to, we have to develop our Iman consistently every single day. Right? And engage in that. Participate in that. Put your trust in God. Yeah? Recite du'as. And it's not just about reciting du'as. Some people love to recite du'as all day. Yeah? Put into practice. Put into practice. Yeah? When you say God is, I'm putting my trust in Him, then don't call your doctor every five minutes. Put your trust in God. Yeah? I'm not saying don't go see the doctor. Yeah? <laughs> but put your trust in God then as well. Yeah? Don't check your bank accounts every five minutes. Put your trust in God. Right? These are things that we have to put into practice. And if we can do these five things, inshallah, we will be mentally strong as we get older. And this will help our brothers and sisters throughout the world because we will not feel defeated, but we will feel powerful <coughs> and we will feel like we can do anything to assist anyone. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Walasri inna linsana lafi khusr illa ladina amanu wa amil salihat. وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم